live from KSAT 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Hi there, good morning. It is Monday, March 4th. Thanks for joining us. We hope you had a wonderful weekend. Started off cool and then got kind of warm. It got really warm in the afternoons, but nonetheless, it was a beautiful weekend. Mike Ostrich, how's the work week looking? Well, and kind of a little bit all over the place. One thing for sure, yesterday the humidity started to work its way back in here, and we've got a ton of humidity starting off this morning, and that's also helping out with some fog. We're at 68 degrees, about 20 degrees above normal right now, and then look at that bottom number is at 65. So when those two numbers neck and neck, you get that relative humidity well up there in the 90s, a little bit of a breeze and um, got all the ingredients in place for some of that uh, fog to form up 78 for a high temperature later on today. So we're going to be on the warm side of normal. We're closer to normal right now, uh, but boy, you haven't seen anything yet as far as high temperatures. As far as the aquifer yesterday went up five tenths of a foot and the allergens got a whole whole grocery list out there. Leading the way is mold, which everything is on the low side, but it's at 450. A little bit of oak is starting to show up as well. All right, we do have some fog. Like I said, take a look outside right now. And as you can see over there by Hondo and then heading up in toward Kerrville, got some fog Castroville a little bit. So you're heading out 10, heading out. 90 you're going to run into some of that fog hints of it elsewhere and then a lot down there along the the coastal plain quarter mile visibility in Beeville Victoria and some out in portions of the hill country so pretty much everybody is seeing a little bit of fog and with that some mist I think I saw a couple of just little specks when I got in the street lights and it was on my windshield there this morning not much everybody's in the 60s right now so everybody's way way above normal and of course these numbers Dew points. Oh, it's uh, it's almost early summer kind of humidity out there right now. That will be changing though. Now later on this afternoon, we do have a chance for a couple of showers, a couple of thunderstorms. Storm Prediction Center does have us in the threat for a stray strong to potentially severe storm high winds, but they're going to be really few and far between. Although obviously anything pops, yeah, could be on the the stronger side. So we are going to make it up to 78. Look at that, 90 tomorrow. But don't don't fret about that. We'll talk about that and then we'll take a look at the weekend coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, RJ Marquez, what's going on, sir? All right, Mike. Yeah, welcome back. And we are already off to a rough start this morning on the roads, especially for our drivers on the south part of downtown San Antonio. Take a look behind me. A lot of flashing lights in this area here. So what we're looking at here is that an 18 wheeler actually lost its load earlier this morning. Actually, late last night, it was around 10 o'clock last night that an 18 wheeler lost its load. It was uh, apparently carrying a ton of these sort of steel pipes so that spilled all over the highway so we have what we have right now is that we have this flatbed trailer out that's helping uh, pick up some of the pipes from the highway there there was a crane out there also earlier trying to load some of those pipes onto that flatbed right now so what we're talking about in terms of traffic we're looking at this is 37 the exit ramp to I-10 so the traffic that we're seeing come towards us is I-10 westbound here at uh, at the Bresa area so we do get traffic coming in if you already on I-10 but 37 north North and south, the exit and entrance ramp to I-10 right now, that is shut down at the moment. As we take a look at our maps right here and see exactly what we're looking at. So again, 37, the exit ramps from north and southbound to I-10 west, a little bit after the Presa area. That's going to be closed out for the moment right now because of that 18-wheeler spilled load onto the highway there at I-10 west at 37, something we will continue to follow throughout the morning. They say that it could be a few hours before they get all that stuff picked up from the highway. So that's not the only thing that we're seeing right now at the moment. Loop 1604 west Westbound at Redland Road, we had a, a report of a uh, of a rollover crash in this area here. So we unfortunately don't have any cameras in this area, but this is still being reported by TxDOT. Now the rest of the city, everything else is looking okay. But again, for uh, our purposes right now, especially at this time of the morning, we do have a pretty significant delay or some significant activity there south of downtown. Something again, we will continue to monitor as we make our way through our five o'clock hour. Mark and Stephanie, back to you guys. Thank you, RJ. New this morning, San Antonio police say a woman was killed overnight after she was hit by someone driving a vehicle. Happened around 1 a.m. on the 410 access road between West Military and Culebra. Police say they're not sure if the woman jumped off a flyover ramp or ran out onto the highway when the vehicle hit her. Witnesses told police they saw an SUV run over her and keep going. Police say another vehicle might have hit her as well. She was pronounced dead at the scene. The search will continue later this morning for an 80 year old man who a crew say drowned at Calaveras Lake. So far, we know that rescue crews were called out just before six o'clock last night for reports that an elderly man who went overboard near the CPS power plant dam. Bear County deputies, San Antonio Fire Department and game wardens are handling that search. 
So BCSO is reporting one boat continued routine patrols on the lake during the overnight period, and the full operation will start back up this morning. So far, we don't know the man's name or what caused him to fall into the water. A 19-year-old suspect shot and killed himself inside the Bear County Jail over the weekend. That team's name, Jesus Gonzalez. A case that does not typically report on suicides, but it is important to explain why people may have heard a gunshot coming from the jail. That's right. It also raises public safety questions about how a gun made it into what's supposed to be a secure area. Daniela Ibarra looked at SAPD policy and found that police should have found the gun before the teen even made it to the county jail. A 19 year old man walked into the Bear County Jail this afternoon to be booked. Six minutes later, he was dead. It's a, a pretty apparent to us that it appears to be a suicide. Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar says emergency crews responded to the jail just after noon. He says the teen, now identified as Jesus Gonzalez, was charged with domestic violence choking, a felony. By our policy, we strip search all inmates uh, that, are, that are brought in on a felony. He says Gonzalez pulled out a gun during the strip search and shot himself. How did the gun get in there? It's, it's, it's a secure facility. I mean, literally nobody is armed, not even us. So absolutely, the, the weapon should have been found before it got to that point. San Antonio police say an officer arrested the teen this morning on a warrant and took him to the jail. SAPD policy shows officers are responsible for searching those they arrest for weapons, dangerous objects, contraband or evidence. The policy says transporting officers are held accountable for any prisoners who get to a detention facility with any of those items. Clearly a weapon was missed. We've requested to speak with police chief William McManus about this. Today, we emailed police asking if the arresting officer found any guns on the teen before bringing him to jail and if any action is being taken. So far, we haven't gotten any answers. All we can assume at this point is that he came into the facility with the weapon uh, hidden under several layers of clothing, but still, absolutely, the, the, the weapon had to have been, should have been found before that. The sheriff says the deputy who witnessed that shooting is on administrative duty per mental health protocol. He also says all the deputies that were in that section of the jail didn't have any weapons on them and none of them were hurt. For GMSA, I'm Daniela Ibarra. This morning, firefighters are still battling massive fires in the Texas Panhandle. Strong winds have spread flames and prompted at least one evacuation while airplanes dropped fire retardant. A large smokehouse, the large smokehouse Creek fire, which has burned more than a million acres, is still only 15% contained. Other fires in the area have burned a combined 180,000 acres, are 60% contained. U.S. Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas says the federal government has devoted funds, equipment, and personnel to assist with battling those fires. The Biden administration is calling for an immediate temporary ceasefire in Gaza in order to release more hostages, get more aid to Palestinian civilians. A six week ceasefire is currently being negotiated in Egypt. According to Israeli media, Israel is demanding Hamas turn over a full list of living hostages before any ceasefire deal moves forward. Today, Vice President Harris is set to meet with a member of Israel's war cabinet where she is expected to push the urgency of increasing U.S. aid into Gaza. On Saturday, U.S. military cargo planes dropped food into pallets, in pallets rather, over that city. A powerful blizzard hit the Sierra Nevada over the weekend as the biggest storm of the season shut down a long stretch of a major interstate in California. So gusty winds and heavy rain hit lower elevations, leaving tens of thousands of homes without power. More than 10 feet of snow hit the area, creating life-threatening conditions for people in the region around Lake Tahoe and blocking travel on the key East Freeway. Super Tuesday is tomorrow. KSAT will have complete coverage of the elections and some early results for races here in San Antonio and the surrounding area. Join Myra Arthur and Steve Sreester for the KSAT Super Tuesday live stream tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. We'll also have a complete recap on GMSA Wednesday morning. Coverage will be available on all of our streaming platforms. And if you want to check out that sample ballot for both the Democratic and Republican primaries, you can scan this QR code on your screen. It will take you to our Vote 2024 page on KSAT.com. That's where we also have a list of voting locations and the hours.
Meanwhile, former President Donald Trump is leading in all 15 states and territories where delegates are up for grabs. This as former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley hits the campaign trail looking for an upset. And as ABC's Ike Jachi reports, Haley now has some much needed momentum leading into Super Tuesday. This morning, Nikki Haley is celebrating her first victory of the 2024 campaign, winning the Republican primary in Washington, D.C., making her the first woman to ever win a Republican presidential primary or caucus. This is the time for us to make our choice. This is the time for us to be loud and let everybody know that America is better than what we see right now. Washington is one of the most heavily Democratic jurisdictions in the country, with only about 23,000 registered Republicans in the city. Shortly after Haley's victory, through a spokesperson, Trump sarcastically congratulated her on being named Queen of the Swamp by the lobbyists and D.C. insiders. Trump is likely to pick up several hundred delegates on Super Tuesday when voters in 15 states head to the polls. The former president barely mentioning Haley this weekend on the campaign trail. She was going around every show, Donald Trump, uh, Donald Trump, this and that. That wasn't working too well. Haley now changing course, refusing to pledge to endorse Trump should he become the GOP nominee. So you're no Trump's longer bound by that pledge? No, I think I'll make what decision I want to make. Meanwhile, Vice President Kamala Harris setting the stage for President Biden's State of the Union address on Thursday, saying the choice between President Biden and Trump is clear. Fundamental freedoms under assault, the freedom to vote, the freedom from fear, violence, and harm. This is First Lady Jill Biden makes her waves on the campaign trail in Las Vegas, reminding voters of the influence and power women had during the 2020 election. We are immovable and unstoppable. The Supreme Court has indicated it will issue rulings today, including a decision on whether Colorado can kick Trump off the primary ballot after a state court ruled him ineligible due to his efforts to overturn the 2020 election results. Ike Jachi, ABC News, Washington. Spurs hosting the Pacers last night, but before tip-off, Victor Winmanyama got his January Western Conference Rookie of the Month award. Kind of makes you wonder how big of a trophy case he's going to need for all of his awards later this year. To the game, Spurs strike first. Wimby gets first points off uh, this missed three in a putback jam. Devin Vassell makes a three and put the Spurs up by nine. Later the first, uh, Blake Wesley getting the steal and taking it to himself to the paint, down the paint for the slam. Spurs were up by as many as 12 and led 26-16 after one. Spurs also led at the half. All right, jump into the third now. Spurs come out flat. Indy would lead by three when the Spurs call an early timeout. And after that, Spurs retake the lead on a Branham three-pointer right there. Add on a quick Wimby three. And the Spurs go back up by five. Later in the third, Wesley to Zach Collins for the dunk. Spurs led by nine after three. Fourth quarter, Spurs go on a 10-0 run late and get their fourth set of back-to-back -back wins this season. How about them, Apples? Here's your final. Spurs win 117-105. San Antonio now 13-48 on the season and setting in our magic GMSA goal of 15 wins this season. <laughs> so up next, the Spurs travel east to Houston take on the Rockets. Thursday is a game in Sacramento against the Kings. Then the Spurs play the Golden State Warriors coming up on Saturday. Go Spurs, go. Yeah, go Spurs, go. We just want you to do well. Time now, 513 and 68 degrees for now. Up next, Apple will reportedly announce new products soon. Why it's foregoing the traditional spring device debut event. And let's look out there with live cam. Something I had kind of, I don't want to say forgotten about, but got used to not having that humidity, but it's back. It was back yesterday morning and this morning as well. We're going to check in with Mike to see what we can expect for the rest of your work week. 517, Apple expected to announce new products soon on its website rather than hosting one of those big spring events. ABC's Rhiannon Alley has details in today's Tech Bites. 
In today's Tech Bites, Apple is expected to unveil a new batch of products this week. It's rumored to include new iPads, an updated Magic Keyboard, and two new MacBook Air models. The announcements will reportedly come through online press releases instead of a spring event. Next, California has approved the expansion of Waymo's robo-taxi operations. The company can now deploy its driverless taxis in 22 cities in the Bay Area and in most of Los Angeles. That includes freeways up to 65 miles per hour. Local officials oppose the expansion. And Spotify has added a new option. The streaming service has introduced the audiobooks-only subscription service. The standalone feature costs 10 bucks per month. It's free for users who want access to Spotify's collection of more than 200,000 titles. Those are your Tech Bites. I'm Rhiannon Alley. Have a great day. 518, 68 degrees. Looks like out there with trans guys still kind of problems there at I-10 and Presa where the truck lost its load earlier this morning. We're going to get getting another check in with RJ Marcus very soon. The chances of a plane crash, one in 11 million. You're not going to finish the assault tonight, right? Never waking up from anesthesia, one in 185,000. Validate your parking or just see how it goes? Wait, what? Why stress about the unlikely? Does a killer clown worry about being struck by lightning while winning the lottery? Sure don't. But your odds of falling victim to online crime are one in four. You need Aura. You, your family, all protected from scary online stuff. <laughs> Protect everything your family does online with Aura. There's something going around the Gordon hole. Good thing Gertrude found Delsum. Now what's going around is 12-hour cough relief. And the giggles. The family that takes Delsum together feels better together. Crunchy. Ooh. Tasty. Ah. Oh. Sweet or savory. Always satisfying. Give me blue diamonds. Crunchy, tasty, sweet or savory. Always satisfying. Give me blue diamonds. Crunchy, tasty, sweet or savory. Always satisfying. Give me blue diamond almonds. Good morning, everybody. Hope you had an awesome weekend. 521 on your early, early Monday morning. Good morning and traffic uh, troubles ooh. already. Yeah, that's a lot of bright light out there. Yeah, guys, and uh, sounds like uh, my microphone might be off. I was kind of messing with it a little. I'm hearing you. Looks like we're good. Okay, yeah, yeah. here we go. We're good to go as we take a look here at uh, this traffic situation taking place there south. Are we sure we're good? Because I can hear myself coming off of, I think, your mic. I don't know. Oh, okay. you're coming off of your mic right now, Mark. Okay. So do you want to walk together? And <laughs> yeah. yeah. We could do Bye, okay. guys. All right. All right. So keep talking. <laughs> we could do a little walk together. I, okay. My mic says that it's on, but okay. currently that might not be. Oh, okay. okay. Here, you talk. Okay. I'm going to check your microphone okay. real quick. Sounds good. Yeah. yeah. All right. So what we're looking at right now, guys, on TransGuide is uh, we're looking at a crash that involved an 18 wheeler from uh, earlier this morning. And, um, Looks like uh, we had an 18-wheeler drop its load earlier there. The few steel pipes that were dropped into the area. Here you go, Mark. There you go, sir. Yeah. Oh, it looks like I'm back now. It's there on. Go. It yep. was on. Mm -hmm. Yay. Okay. Hey, best way to start the video. All right. So basically, we're looking at uh, I-10 and Vanessa right now. No, it's not. Yeah. Why don't we there bail, RJ? Okay. Yeah. Away, yeah. We'll check okay. Out. Yeah, that's a 10 at press and we're going to continue to update this. We'll have another update hopefully uh, right before the end of this half hour. All right, we got some fog to deal with right now. This is what it looked like around Floresville yesterday and in some places this is what it's going to look like this morning. Now, as you can see, there's that uh, not bad over there at 10 to 410, but then a little bit of that kind of fuzz that haze right there along the horizon, all the humidity that has come back in here. Mid upper 60s, 20 degrees above normal right now. A ton of humidity. You get above 60 with the dew points. The measure moisture in the atmosphere and then yeah you really start to feel it and you're going to feel it and not only this morning but throughout the rest of today maybe a little bit of mist out there just a, a you know small per percentage of that just to take into account some of that mist we'll see a little bit of sunshine later on today going to make it up to 74 at noon and then later on this afternoon a couple of showers going to try and pop up around the area Rain chances are not that great, maybe 20, 30 percent at best, which is actually sort of what the uh, computer models are showing as we go in through the rest of the morning. A little sprinkle of the shower here and there, uh, a couple of them down to the south. Uh, yeah, not a like I said, a, a real great chance overall. Then we get into tonight and some of these uh, up here to the east and to the northeast, especially late, late tonight, may become potentially strong to severe. 
with high winds and some small hail being the biggest threats. And that's kind of the northern half of our viewing area. But again, it's going to be sort of few and far between as far as those are concerned. The humidity, here's what's going to be happening. Obviously, it sticks around throughout the rest of today. And then notice out there to the northwest where there's some drier air around Ozona, Dryden. Well, that decides to come on in here throughout the afternoon tomorrow. We're going to get a dry line move through here. Humidity drops off. Wind shift around to the west. That's what's going to then make temperatures just skyrocket tomorrow. We're going to get up into the upper 80s and a lot of low 90s around the area. So it'll be comfortable. Hot, though, don't get used to it because that then is all going to be uh, changing as we go on into the, the rest of the week. So today we're going to be up to 78 degrees. A couple of showers around here later on this afternoon going into tonight. Maybe a stronger storm or two late tonight. A lot of sunshine tomorrow. 90 drier air. That's not going to last very long because the humidity comes back on in here. We'll still be above normal throughout the rest of the week. A couple of showers and storms Thursday, late Thursday, early, early Friday. Then a front moves through here and that's going to clear us out very nicely for the weekend. And of course, before you go to bed Saturday night, got to set your clocks ahead one hour for daylight saving time. More after this. In this morning's GMA first look an ABC News exclusive. Do you have closure? It's the TikTok series that's captivated the nation. Who TF did I marry? I'm going to tell the story of how I met, dated, married and divorced a real pathological liar. The 50 part post has racked up over 400 million views and chronicles Teresa Johnson's whirlwind pandemic romance, which she says was filled with love, heartbreak and alleged deception. And this morning she's telling her story to GMA's Robin Roberts. Why do you think this you your story has resonated with so many people? I do think being accountable People appreciate that mm -hmm. because I know I appreciate that. I, I, and coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have much more of Robin Roberts' exclusive interview with your GMA First Look. I'm Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. Um, time now, 529 and 68 degrees for now. Some airlines are hiking up the price to check a bag when you fly. We'll tell you how much coming up. And ahead on GMSA at 6, Port SA, the Alamo City's Dynamic Technology and Innovation Campus is making its mark on our community. And we spoke to their CEO to find out just how they're doing that and what plans they have for the future. Good morning, everybody. It is Monday, March 4th. Thanks for joining us. We hope you had a wonderful weekend, and we'll talk about what we're going to expect this week in just a minute. But first, our problems on the roadway. Yeah, actually. guys, problems on the roadways, especially for our drivers south of downtown. Let's take a look here at Trans Guide. As we take a look at 10 Empresa, and what we have here is uh, last night, late, late last night, around 10 o'clock at night, we had an 18-wheeler uh, spill its load onto the highway. So we were, what we were being told was that it was some uh, steel pipes that actually fell onto the highway there at the 37 exit onto I-10 West. So you're seeing traffic come through here. This is for our drivers that are already on I-10 West right now at Bres. As you see, they kind of make their way through, even though we do still have one lane blocked uh, for our drivers coming I-10 West right now. But again, this is the 37 uh, exit ramp onto I-10 right now. 18 wheeler spilled as steel pipes onto the highway. They've had another flatbed on there for, out there for a few hours trying to collect and help out pick up some of these steel pipes in the area. They also had a crane out there to kind of deal with some of the mess that we're seeing out there at the moment right now. So I Again, 37 onto I-10 West have some major problems. As we take a look at our maps and you see that now we are seeing some major backups here in both directions. Basically, if you're coming up from 37, I-10, you're going this westbound on I-10, you're going to run into problems there. You're also seeing problems now backing up here on the eastbound side of I-10 as well. That's because 37 south and north, the entrance and exit ramps in both directions are shut down right now as crews continue to clean up this big mess there south of downtown right now. So what we could, what we do want to say is that if you want to find an alternate route, maybe a Hackberry, Steve's Avenue, that might be an option if you're coming from there. Westfall Avenue may be an option if you're coming from uh, the downtown area. Want to let you know about a couple of things that we're following at the moment. It's been a little bit busier than normal for a Monday, especially. Uh, Blue 64 westbound, we still have a crash being reported here at Redland Road, and not causing any major delays at the moment right now, so that's good news, but there are some other things popping up on our maps here. We have a stalled vehicle at 410 eastbound at Roosevelt, and it looks like we're also getting reports of another crash there at 151 at 410. So that's something we will continue to monitor as we make our way through. But biggest thing we're seeing right now, 37 onto I-10 West at Presa. We have this uh, closed entrance and exit ramps onto the westbound lanes of I-10 from 37. Mark and 70. Back. Oh, excuse me, Mike. 
Thank you very much, now. sir. Yeah. Uh, step outside this morning. You are definitely going to notice the humidity when you get out there and you can see the low clouds and a little bit of that fuzz right there along the horizon. Temperature is basically around the area 20 degrees above normal. Should be in the upper 40s. We're in the upper 60s right now. And that number 65 degrees, a ton of humidity. When your dew points in the mid 60s, you definitely feel it. We do have some fog to deal with. Three miles visibility, Hondo, Kerrville, as nothing, at least on this map, real pea soup as of yet. Thicker fog down here along the coastal plain, all the way from Corpus Christi, Beeville, Victoria, and then some out along the Rio Grande Valley as well. So everybody is seeing some fog, and it will get thicker as the, the morning rolls on and as we approach sunrise, as is usually the case. Again, everybody's mid 60s, mid to upper 60s, 20 degrees above normal. Everybody's got all this humidity hanging around here, and it is going to be sticking around throughout the rest of today. We've got a whole just laundry list of allergens out there. Everything's in bloom right now. Notice how oak is starting to uh, show up as well. All the live oak leaves are starting to fall as so you know we're going to be getting into the throes of bat season before you know it. And as far as later on today, there is a very small risk for a couple of strong to potentially severe storms and there, the rain's actually going to be kind of few and far between, but there will be one or two of them out there. So again, warm and humid today. We're going to make it into the uh, upper 70s. Stray storm late this afternoon tonight. If anything does pop, high winds and hail will be the biggest threats. Now, tomorrow we do get some dry air moving in here. Very hot, though, with those westerly winds getting up to 90 tomorrow. But in the shade, it's going to be a comfortable 90. That's not going to last long. Humidity comes back in here the rest of the week. Warm and humid, a couple of showers, especially Thursday into early Friday. Then another front's going to move through here, and uh, that's setting us up for a fantastic weekend. Seasonable temperatures. And of course, you got to set your clocks ahead one hour this weekend. All the details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Thank you, Mike. New this morning, San Antonio police have some questions for a driver, specifically for the person who ran over a woman on a highway access road. The woman died at the scene. Our Katrina Weber joins us live near Loop 410 west of Culebra Road. And Katrina, we understand police are calling this a hit and run, but say there could be more to the story. That's right. Uh, one of the scenarios they're investigating is that the woman may have jumped from this uh, overpass here or ran across the road and then was hit by a car. But either way, they say she was hit by a car and they would like to track down that driver. And it happened right here on this access road around one o'clock this morning. We have some video from when they began their investigation at that time. Uh, they also had paramedics here at the scene, but they quickly found out that there was nothing they could do for that woman. She did die of her injuries. The police uh, don't have a whole lot of information at this point. They say they did talk with a witness who saw an SUV run over the woman and keep going. But they say at this point, they're not even sure if that was the only vehicle or maybe even the first vehicle that ran over the woman. So it sounds like right now they don't have a lot of information uh, to go on. We do not know the name of the woman who was killed just yet. Police told us that she was either in her late 40s or early 50s. Reporting live on the west side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. The U.S. Supreme Court rule could rule as early as today on whether former President Donald Trump's name can be kept off ballots in some states. Super Tuesday is tomorrow and Colorado and Maine are among more than a dozen states holding primaries. And both of those states have barred Trump from the ballot. The states ruled Trump is not eligible because of a clause in the Constitution barring someone from running for office if they engage in insurrection. The justices have indicated it will issue at least one opinion today, and many are speculating the high court will rule on the ballot question. Are you going on a trip soon? Well, some airlines are hiking up the price to check a bag when you fly. United Airlines will charge passengers 80 bucks to check one bag for a round trip flight starting later this month. And last week, American Airlines upped its luggage fees by five bucks. So JetBlue and Alaska Airlines also have announced fee increases this year. Southwest does not charge for checking bags and Delta does charge but has not increased its price since 2018. An Israeli war cabinet minister is visiting the White House today. He is expected to talk about a potential ceasefire. As CNN's Amy Kiley reports, the U.S. is helping negotiate the deal and is urging the parties to accept. 
Let's get a ceasefire. The White House is increasing pressure on Israel and Hamas to stop fighting, at least temporarily. Let's reunite the hostages with their families and let's provide immediate relief to the people of Gaza. After that speech yesterday, the vice president is hosting Israeli war cabinet minister Benny Gantz today. They're expected to discuss a possible six-week ceasefire and hostage deal. Secretary of State Antony Blinken is set to meet with Gantz tomorrow. It is time for the president to use all the leverage that he has um, to get a long-term ceasefire. The U.S., Egypt and Qatar are helping work out the deal. The U.S. wants an agreement by the start of Ramadan Sunday. Hamas has negotiators in Cairo for talks, but Israel didn't send a delegation yesterday. It says it wants some hostage details first. But Harris says Israel agrees to the deal's general framework. Meanwhile, the humanitarian crisis in Gaza continues. I have to wait uh, also in a line to, for hours to use a toilet and to take uh, some food if it's available. UNICEF says at least 10 children have died in recent days from malnutrition and dehydration. It predicts that number will climb rapidly without more humanitarian access. We have over 25,000 uh, innocent people who have been killed in the process of rooting out Hamas, and it appears it's going from bad to worse. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. Back here at home on your Monday morning, 540, 68 degrees. And up next, how a local organization is making sure that today's learners become tomorrow's leaders. Outside with live cam, feeling more like a spring afternoon out there. 68 degrees at present, and it looks like we see quite a bit of moisture out there right now. Not on the roads, but just kind of hanging in the air. As Steph mentioned earlier, the humidity is up to start our day. Good morning, 544. Since 2001, the Community for Life Foundation has provided food to those in need, mentorship to the young, life skill training for adults, and thousands of dollars every year to help the future leaders of our community. The executive director of the program joined Leading SA this weekend to talk about the success and the future of the program. Dr. Scott joined us and we talked about a lot. We talked about the background and the mission of the foundation. We also talked about what an impact it's made, not even on just the individuals and the families' lives, but also the impact on our community as a whole. Here's a bit of our conversation. We wanna to help today's learners become tomorrow's leaders. So last year, because of corporate and private sponsors like Wells Fargo and, and now we're coming to church, we gave a record $70,000. Yes, $70,000 in scholarships in one year to deserve the students. And uh, this year we wanna give $100,000. So, uh, you know, we're very excited. This is our 23rd year and we want again to help people pursue their life's mission and help today's learners become tomorrow's leaders. We also discussed how you can get involved, whether that's actually donating or becoming a scholarship recipient. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, we have all that information right now. Just head to the Leading SA section of KSAT.com. Of course, we have Leading SA every Sunday at 8 a.m. So guys, we'll see you next Sunday. Back to you. Time now, it's 545 and 68 degrees for now. If you use the I-1037 interchange this morning, heads up, we've still got an issue that's been working all night long. You don't see it on any of these cameras, but we've got a big rig that lost its load late last night and they are still working to clear that this morning. We'll take a live look with RJ coming up. All right, welcome back. 5.49 on your Monday morning. Already been a rough start on the roads this morning as we take a quick look at TransGuide I-10 at uh, Presa. You're seeing the TransGuide camera here. We had an 18-wheeler coming off of that 37 exit ramp to I-10 West that uh, lost its load earlier. Uh, actually, it's been out there for a few hours. 10 o'clock last night is when it was initially reported. Now, some good news. Just got off the phone with TransGuide, and they do anticipate that this hopefully will clear out within the next 45 minutes or so, but it's still going to be a little while before we get everything cleared out. We're looking I-10 westbound traffic coming here. Now we do have one lane block, but this is already for drivers that are on I-10 west. If you're coming on 37 and within the next 30 minutes or so, you probably will not be able to get on I-10 west till they fully clear this out. So what are a couple of options here? Well, if you're coming up from the northbound part of 37, you could exit Steve's Avenue. That'll take you all the way across, get you back on Mitchell and then onto I-10 west. That way, if you're coming from 37 and the downtown area, we do have uh, South Presa Street, which, which will get you down to 10 and also Rose 
Roosevelt Street as well as you see that traffic here has been backed up to about Hackberry. So again, not seeing a major, major delay right now because uh, not seeing too many people on the roads, but still something that has been uh, out there for a few hours now. In fact, uh, it's been out there for a little while. As we continue to look here at our north side traffic, we're looking at Loop 1604 westbound at Redland Road. Now we're starting to see a backup here. Uh, there was, was reported as a rollover crash earlier. Traffic back up all the way to Boverde if you are headed to 281 on Loop 1604. And what just popped up right now, and uh, Trans Guy did want to mention this one to me as well. We had a crash being reported at 151 eastbound at loop 410 it looks like right now they're closing off one of the ramps that's going from 410 north to 151 so this is just uh, popping up on our radar right now something of course that uh, we'll keep an eye on as we make our way out but again biggest thing that we've been following throughout the five o'clock hour is this uh, 18 wheeler crash here it lost its load earlier but hopefully we can get this cleared out for our drivers south of downtown within the next uh, 30 to 45 minutes or so guys hopefully you know when yeah. things get Normally get busier. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Hey. Get that cleared out before the 6 o'clock hour. Thank you, sure. RJ. Thanks, Thank guys. Thank you. All right, spring-like temperatures. Starting to see a lot more flowers and everything blooming out yeah. there. I love this picture. Aww. Lone little, kind of a sad little picture, but... <laughs> peaceful. Peaceful. It, it, it is very peaceful. That lone little blue bonnet out there. But there's a lot of folks been sending in a lot more blue bonnet pictures. Got those coming up a little bit later on. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect shot. All right. Notice the kind of the, the haze right there, that fuzzy look off in the distance. That's all the humidity that's just kind of sitting on top of us. We do have some fog to deal with. Head out 90, Castroville, Hondo run into some fog. Out 410, or excuse me, out 10, I should say, in toward Kerrville. Uh, it's not bad right now, but it usually does get thicker as we approach sunrise and just after that. Down along the coast, a lot of that fog and then also some over there right along the, the Rio Grande this morning. Temperatures, we are in the uh, upper 60s, mid to upper 60s all around the area. On average, 20 degrees above normal. 10% chance for maybe a, some mist out there. So watch it that the roads are damp, as is usually the case when you have all this fog, all this moisture that's getting pumped on in here from the, uh, the Gulf of Mexico. Going to make it up to 74 at noon some sunshine thrown in today maybe a little bit but then also a couple of showers going to be popping up around here sort of few and far between we are going to make it up to 78 later on today so we'll be about 10 degrees above normal for a high temperature as well now computer model does have a couple little sprinkly showers a few more trying to develop as we go into this afternoon and then those will move move across the area it's not going to be a huge rain event again just a, a few of these showers here and there and then once we get into tonight notice how some of these are going to start to uh, really fire up there and that's when we start to see uh, even later on this evening chance for some of these to become severe, strong, potentially severe. So that'll be something we have to look out for. Although again, I think any of these that do reach severe levels or potentially severe levels, just going to be kind of few and far between, but it's going to be high winds and hail that will be the, the biggest threats with this. So the humidity, which is very, very high, is actually going to be dropping down by Tuesday, by tomorrow, and then start to work its way back up here. So tomorrow that's going to allow things to really uh, to heat up with that drier air. Then the humidity really comes back in here by Thursday, and then we go into the weekend. It's going to drop off, and we're setting up for a fantastic weekend around here. Here's what it looks like today, 78 with a couple of showers around here into tonight as well. And then tomorrow we hit 90. Now we get dry air coming in here. Westerly wind, perfect ingredient to have those temperatures skyrocket tomorrow will drop back down to roughly 10 or so above normal for the rest of the week. Couple of showers out there. Humidity makes it back in here as well. A few showers, thunderstorms Thursday, early, early Friday front comes through gets rid of the humidity, clears us out. Great looking weekend, which will hopefully make up for the fact that Sunday is just that day. <laughs> that, and you have to set oh, your clocks ahead yes. before you go to bed for the beginning of daylight saving time. We are away, aware of that day. You know, um, a lot of districts here in San Antonio will be off that following week, so ah. that'll be good for the kiddos to oh, get adjusted. That's right, for spring break next yes. spring break time. Mm -hmm. It's that time already. Thank you, Mike. 554, 68 degrees. Go ahead and look at your winning lotto numbers. Pick three, zero, one, seven, fireball one, daily four, two, four, seven, seven, fireball three. Cash five numbers, 12, 13, 18, 24, 32, lotto Texas, two, 19, 39, 46, 48, 52. Powerball, 
Uh, this was the drawing the other night. Tonight's jackpot is up to $460 million. Mega Millions tomorrow night up to $650 million. We're following the latest as the search continues for a man. San Antonio police say drowned at Calaveras Lake. We'll tell you what else we know this morning. And Trans Guide right now. Let's take a look and see how things are looking out there. Tenet Pressa traffic is looking pretty good right now. We'll get an update from RJ coming up.